Well, it's time to put our rings on our piston, so stay tuned. Okay, before we actually show you how the rings install on our pistons, we've got one that's done. I wanted to show you how the assembly actually looks once it's complete. Uh, with a ring set on a, pit, on a standard piston like this, you're going to have two compression rings, two oil rings, and an expander between the oil rings. The reason you have an expander is because the oil should collect between the oil rings, and then here we've got a piston that's open. You'll see that the oil ring area on the piston actually has holes or galleys where the oil can run back down into the engine. And there is an important order that you'll want to follow and your instructions for your piston ring set should say this, but uh, you're going to do your oil rings. After you put the expander in, you're going to do your two oil rings, the top oil ring, then the bottom oil ring, and then you're going to do your two compression rings. And we'll show all this to you when we actually install a set. Uh, one thing also to remember is you're going to want to clock your rings and what that means is each ring has a gap in it you're going to want to make sure that those gaps don't line up with each other. Like if I turn these compression rings to where the gaps on each one is on the same side, you're going to note we're going to have a weak area in our compression because those gaps line up and that's going to be an area where the compressions are really weak. So when you hear somebody saying about that they're going to clock the rings, that just means that those two gaps are going to be, they don't have to be exactly on opposite sides, but you're going to want to get, get it pretty close to being on opposite sides of the piston so that there is a seal around the entire piston and the gaps aren't lined up. Same with the oil rings, you're going to make sure you clock those as well. So let's get the, the next one started and we'll show you how they actually install. So the first process again in installing all your rings is your expander for your oil ring. Um, you're going to want to look at your instructions for the rings that you've chosen for yours. Sometimes they need to go in a certain way, up or down. Uh, on ours, it doesn't matter. But again, you're going to want to follow your instructions for your set. You're going to line up one side. And you're going to try to, be, uh, try to be as careful as you can to not bend the expander any more than you have to. So you're going to want to line it up and you can see it slides into place. Make sure that it's not overlapping or bound up on itself uh, within the groove. But that one went in well. So the next part that we're actually going to put in is the upper oil ring. Um, our oil rings are exactly the same and they can go in either way. Again, you're going to want to follow the instructions for the set that you've actually chosen. Um, so we get one side started. We just turn it in and then Slowly let it slide into place. You can see it's now seated in its groove. We've got the upper one in. Now we do the same thing with the lower one. So now we've got them all in. Here's one gap and here's the other gap, so I'm going to spin the top ring to move the gap to the other side. Again, clocking our rings as we go. So now we've got the oil rings in. I'll go ahead and bring out the compression rings and we'll talk a little about those. Okay, for our two compression rings, when ours were packaged, we've already taken them out of the package, but the compression rings for the first and second compression ring are packed together because they are different. You'll want to make sure that you keep them in order or just take them out of the package that they, they come in as you're installing them because um, they are a different, uh, they are set up and the geometry is different on each one so you're going to make sure that you're going to put them in on, in the right order. Now the compression rings that we're actually using, um, they are a ductile iron with a plasma moly coating on them. You'll notice on them that they have a dot on one side of the ring. That dot is to go up according to our instructions with our set so we're going to make sure that we follow that. Um, so this is our bottom ring. So we're going to start one side in and then we're just going to work our way around and let it slide in. And then again we're just trying to take our time and make sure that we don't bend it any more than we have to. Some rings that you get will require you to use special tools, special expanders. Um, our set is just a twist on type. And now the ring's on. We make sure that it's properly seated in the groove and again just with the again with the top one there's a dot on it so we're going to start it in let it roll around and then let it slide on the piston
just take your time so you're not putting too much stress on the rings as you're putting them on. There we go. So again, there's our two gaps. I'm going to clock the gaps by spinning the top one to the other side of the piston. And now we've got all of our rings installed. That's as easy as it is for our set. Again, like I said, there are going to be some sets where you're going to need to use a special expander or a tool, and the instructions should tell you when that's necessary. Um, just take your time. You don't want to bend or break. These are a more brittle metal material. You can snap these very easily, so make sure you take your time. Don't put any stress on them. If you find one binding up and you're having to put too much pressure, take it back off and start over so that you don't do any damage to the rings. So we're going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these, show you the finished product, and then we'll be ready to put these pistons in the engine for the last time.